Good morning, Stealthy Stingrays. Sorry for the delay. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties, but we're up and running and excited to talk with you about sharks. Now, I hope you're excited to join us because sharks are one of my favorite things to talk about. My name is Sarah. I'm one of the educators here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California, and we're so glad you're joining us today. Now, we're going to explore what makes a shark a shark and talk about some of the shark species that we have living here at the aquarium. But while we're exploring today, if you have any questions or you want to share observations, we would love to hear from you. Now, I'm not alone here in the studio. We have a team of two working today. So you've got me and Carrie, and Carrie is controlling everything you see behind me, and she just put up this phone number. So that number is 562-286-1838. So we would love to hear your questions, comments, observations, anything you would like to share from us, share with us, go ahead and text us. Now, if you're watching this program live, so it's 10 a.m. on Thursday morning, go ahead and text us. If you're watching after the fact, go ahead and email us any questions. We'd still love to hear from you, but we're not always manning that text line. So we have this email address just below that phone number, live at lbaop.org, and you can email us your questions there. All right, Stealthy Stingrays, are you ready to get started? Are you ready to explore sharks today? Let's go. So I'm going to step off the screen for a moment. And what I want us to do first off is just make some observations. Now, observing is a tool that scientists use all the time when they're studying animals, and it's just watching these animals. Now, you might know a lot about sharks, or maybe you're tuning in because you don't know too much about sharks. But the great thing about making observations is you don't have to have any prior knowledge because when we're observing, we're just looking at something and describing what it is that we see. Now, what we're looking at here is our exhibit here at the aquarium, our big shark lagoon. So we have cameras in a lot of our exhibits that you can watch and visit with our animals, even if you're not joining us live here in person. So what we're seeing here is the exact same thing if I walked right outside to take a look at shark. We are all watching the same thing. So let's start making some observations about these sharks. What do you notice about the sharks? Are they all the same? Are there some different types of sharks in here? What about the colors on their body? Are they all one color? Do they have multiple colors? Are there any patterns on any of the sharks? Or even how do we know that these animals are in fact sharks? Now I've been saying that word shark and I call this our shark lagoon. So we can infer that there are gonna be sharks in here, but how do we know that these are sharks? Are there any specific things on their bodies that make them a shark, that set them apart from some other animals? Do we see any other animals in here with our sharks? How can we tell them all apart? So you are welcome to think those observations. You can say them out loud. If you're watching with anyone, you can discuss and share with them, or you can use that text line and text us in your observations. Now, what I wanna do today is I'm gonna draw a shark and you are welcome to draw along with me. And we're gonna cover all the things that make a shark a shark. Now, when I'm drawing, I'm gonna be using a whiteboard and a whiteboard marker you can use any drawing tools you have. You can use paper, you can use any scratch paper, pencil, cray ooh, hello shark, crayons, markers, whatever you have available, or you can just watch along and you don't have to draw. It's completely up to you. But let's start thinking about how am I gonna draw the shark and what makes this shark a shark? So the first thing I want you to really zone in on is the shape of the shark's body because that's gonna be the basis of our drawing. So how can we describe the shape of these sharks' body? Take a look at this shark here. It's coming around. Oh, this one over here. Here we go, perfect. How can we describe their body? Now the way that we actually, what we call their body, it's something called fusiform. And that's a really fancy word. We can say that all together, fusiform. It's kind of a fun word to say, fusiform. But what fusiform really means is we can describe their body shape as football-like. Think about a football that you throw. It's kind of like that diamond, kind of rounded diamond shape. That's really what fusiform means, it's that shape. So I'm gonna start drawing my shark. We're gonna go over, I have this special document camera. I'm gonna go on over and I'm gonna start with that fusiform or that sort of rounded diamond shape to draw my shark. Just like that. It's almost kind of like a lemon too. So that is gonna be the body of my shark. So there is our fusiform body, but that doesn't really look like a shark, does it? No, it's missing quite a few things. Let's go back to Shark Lagoon for a moment and think about what is my shark missing? What do I need to add to that body 
to make it look more like a shark. Hmm. Do you notice anything that I need to add? Go ahead and text us in if you'd like to participate and let me know what I can add to my shark to make it more shark-like. Now, one big thing that I'm noticing as our sharks are disappeared from view, but they'll come back, there we go, is our sharks are moving around a lot. But what are they using to move? That's right, they're using their fin. Ooh, we've got a good look at all of our sharks coming by and their fins. Now we notice as our sharks kind of come by, we've got a couple different sharks here. Their fins might look slightly different, but they all seem to have fins in about the same area. And they have quite a few fins. Perfect, fins right there. So let's go back to the drawing and we're gonna draw some fins. And each fin serves a different purpose, but they all help a shark swim. And they're all important and necessary for the shark to be able to swim really well. So, ah, someone texted in dorsal fin, which was literally gonna be the next word out of my mouth. Excellent job, the dorsal fin. Now the dorsal fin is probably the most recognizable fin on a shark. Dorsal means the top or the back. So it's gonna be the one, we can make it on our top or the back like this. So that dorsal fin is gonna be on the top of our shark and it's a triangle. As you'll notice, and if you've tuned in with us in the other shark program, we like to talk about how sharks love triangles. Especially when we're drawing, they have a lot of triangles on their body. So I'm gonna draw the dorsal fin right about here. Oh, I'm gonna make it a little bit forward. So they have a dorsal fin. Now, depending on the type of shark, that size of the dorsal fin can be really different. It can be taller, it can be smaller, sometimes it's more rounded. It just depends on the type of shark. But the dorsal fin helps with balance. And I want you to think, if you have space and you want to try this, you can stand up and stand on one foot. Now sometimes it can be kind of easy, but if you start to wobble, we don't just necessarily fall over, we have something that can help us balance. We have our other foot. Now you can't see my feet, but I kicked out my other leg and then I stood on two feet. So when we're sitting on two feet, we're a lot more stable, we're balanced. Whereas if we stand on one feet, foot, we can be kind of wobbly. So that dorsal fin, that actually helps the shark to balance. So that fusiform body, think about a football. If you throw a football correctly, it should spiral like this. Now the shark, they have those fins to prevent that body from spiraling when they swim. And that dorsal fin, ooh, as we just saw, on our black tip shark is at the very top and it stands up and it helps with balance. Very good. So I have one fin covered for my shark. But like I said, they have a lot of fins. So we're gonna go back to our drawing and we're gonna add another fin. So they've got some fins on the side. Those are gonna be called their pectoral fins or their side fins like this. Almost like airplane wings because they stick out on either side. So I'm gonna draw one right here Actually, I'm gonna draw one like this. And then I'm gonna draw a little one around here like it's on the other side. So there are my two pectoral or side fins. Now, if we go back to Shark Lagoon, I know we're switching around a lot, but if we go back to Shark Lagoon and you notice when these sharks are swimming, they're not really moving that dorsal or their pectoral fins too much. So that dorsal fin sticks up straight. It doesn't really wobble or fold over. It's up pretty straight. And then those pectoral fins, they don't flap them like fish fins or move them back and forth. They're pretty much out to the side. And that's because they're used more for steering. So they kind of lean to one side or the other, help them kind of turn or move from side to side. But those fins stick right out straight. But let's see what part of their body they move the most when they're swimming. Can you tell from that perfect shark? Perfect timing. Oh, here comes another shark. What is it moving? That's right, it's moving its tail. Now its tail has another name, we call it a caudal fin. Now we know that sounds kind of like cuddle, but it's not a cuddly fin, it's a caudal fin. So their caudal fin or their tail is a, another fin we're gonna draw at the very back of our shark. I'm gonna erase this little back part and I'm gonna draw kind of one triangle here like this and then another one, a little smaller one down below. So there is my caudal tail or caudal fin for my shark. So we've got our dorsal fin for balance. We have our pectoral fins for steering and we have our caudal fin for moving forward. Excellent. So it's starting to look a little bit more like a shark, right? Fins are one of the 
big characteristics that we notice on sharks, but they're not the only animal in the ocean that has fins, right? Fish have fins too. So our bony fish, like some of the tropical fish we saw in Shark Lagoon, they have similar fins. They have a dorsal fin, they have pectoral fins, they have that tail fin, but they look a little bit different. So our shark has fins, but there are some other things we can draw on this shark that's gonna make it more shark-like. So think about what else can we add to make it more shark-like? <sighs> I just took a deep breath. Now, when you're breathing and I'm breathing, we use our lungs, right? We have lungs in our body. We can breathe in through our nose or in through our mouth and then out from both of those. We fill our lungs with air and then we exhale. Now, in order for an animal to be alive, they need to breathe. But sharks, are they breathing with lungs? Do they come up to the surface, inhale, and then exhale and then dive back down? No, that's more like a whale or a mammal will do that. So sharks, they can spend their entire lives completely under the water, but they still have to breathe. So what part of their body are they using to breathe? Someone texted in gills, and you're absolutely correct. They use their gills. Excellent. Now, for sharks, they have gills, and so do fish. But their gills look a little bit different. For sharks, they have what we call gill slits. So they have these little lines kind of right here in the middle of um, their body, kind of towards the front, and they have five gill slits. Well, let me retract that. Most sharks have five gill slits. So most of the sharks we look at, if you see their gills and you try and count how many, you're going to find five. But there is one shark in the ocean that has six gills. Any ideas? Ever heard of a shark with six gills? Do you want to know what it's called? You might be surprised by its name. The shark with six gills is called the six-gilled shark. I know, kind of silly. Some animals, we give really creative names or descriptive names, and sometimes we just call it like we see it. So the shark with six gills is a six-gilled shark. Now, most sharks have five gills. There's one shark that has six, the six-gilled shark. And then there's even one shark that has seven gill slits. What do you think we call it? If you guess seven-gilled shark, you've got it. So the two sharks that are the outliers that have six and seven, they're just called the six-gilled and the seven-gilled shark. But most sharks, we can just say they have five gill slits. And what those gill slits are going to do is they're going to pull, they're going to take the oxygen out of the water. So a shark is going to swim with their mouth open, pull in water. The water is going to go over their gills. And inside these gill slits are what are called gill filaments and gill rakers. They look like little brooms or brushes in there. And those little brooms or brush like structures can catch the tiny bubbles of oxygen, pull it out of the water, allow them to breathe while releasing the water out of their body. Now, I did mention that a shark has a mouth, right? So let's add a mouth for my shark. So I'm going to add another, you guessed it, another triangle right here for my shark. But does that look like you would imagine a shark mouth to look like? I think it's missing something in its mouth. Any ideas? Well, let's think about what does it use its mouth for? So one thing I mentioned, right, it's going to pull water in through its mouth to go over its gills. But what is the other big reason or big um, use for its mouth? It's not talking like us. But you're right, it's for eating, so it needs teeth. So I'm gonna draw some little triangle teeth in my shark's mouth. Ta-da! I think it's looking more and more shark-like with everything we add. So we've got our fins. We've got the dorsal fin. We've got the caudal fin, we have pectoral fins, we have gills, we have a mouth with teeth. We're missing something right here. What do you think should go right there? Hmm. That's right, eyes. Our shark needs to be able to see. So I'm going to draw one little eyeball right there. And we'll assume that the other eye is on the other side. Now sharks, they have good eyesight, but their eyesight is best at dusk and dawn. So not quite during the day, not quite at night, sort of that in-between time and then just before the morning when it's sort of sort of light but not super light and not super dark. So that's when they see best. Other than that, they kind of see it looks kind of murky around them. So right here you can see our sharks swimming around. Well, we can see a lot of fish swimming around, but there are sharks with their eyes. Now what's interesting is most fish, including sharks, they don't blink. They don't have eyelids like us, but what sharks do have is something special in the eye. It's called, it's a big word, ready for it? It's called a nictitating membrane. Now with that, it's a fancy word for it's kind of like an eyelid, but it covers the eye so they can still see. So for us, here's the eye. This is 
a sand tiger shark. This is one of the sharks we have here. For us, if we close our eyes, we can't see out of our eyelids, right? And our eyelid protects our eye. For sharks, that nictitating membrane will cover their eye, but they'll still be able to see. But it protects their eye if they're hunting and whatever animal they're trying to eat might try and fight back. It protects their eye and it keeps it safe. So their eyes are very important because that is one way that they can find their food. Now, speaking of how they find their food, using their eyes is just one way, but there's a couple other ways that they can find their food. How might you find food? Say you're upstairs and mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or someone in your house is making cookies. How would you know they're making cookies if you're upstairs and they're downstairs? You might smell it, right? Freshly baked cookies smelling up the whole house smells great. But you use your sense of smell to find that someone is making cookies in the kitchen. So sharks, you can see big eyes. This is big guy. He's our shark here. You can see his nostrils right there. Now, sharks' nose are only used for smelling. For us, our nose serves two purposes. It can smell and <sighs> helps us breathe. But for sharks, their nose is only used for smelling. It's kind of shaped like a C. So water will come in and then it'll come out and it allows them to smell. So I'm gonna draw a little nostril, little C nostril on my shark. Just like that. Just like that. So to find food, sharks might use their eye to see. They might use their nose to smell, but there's actually a third way that a shark might be able to find its food. Now this is a sense that we don't have. It's like a sixth sense. So sometimes when you hear people describe or talk about the senses that sharks have, you might hear them say that sharks actually have six senses. So one more than us. Now, if you look right here towards the nose or the snout of big guy, you might be able to see there's little tiny freckles. It's a little bit hard to see, but you can kind of see them right here on his snoot. He's got these little freckles or pores, and those are called ampullae. So we've got another big word coming for you. The whole thing that we call them are ampullae of Lorenzini. We just refer to them as ampullae. Can we say that word together? Ampullae. And what ampullae are, these little pores, allow sharks to detect electrical charges. Now that might sound kind of weird to think about electrical charges in the ocean, but I want everyone to take your hand and cover your heart. You feel your heart beating? You should feel that. Boom, 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 boom. Now believe it or not, every time your heart beats, you send out this teeny tiny little electrical charge. Now it's not strong enough. I can't hold a light bulb and turn it on like electricity running through the lights, but your heart is sending out that tiny charge and sharks have this special sense where they can sense the heartbeat or those electrical charges from an animal. Now it has to be very close range. So you don't have to worry about walking into the uh, water at the beach and a shark sensing you from miles and miles away. It has to be very close range. But what these ampullae allow sharks to do is if they're swimming and it's kind of murky, if there's a lot of sand or sediment in the ocean or their food likes to hide under the sand, like there's some sharks who eat things like clams or shrimp or even flatfish that hide under the sand, the shark can swim right over the sand and they don't have to dig for their food. But once they go over it, they can sense that right below them, there's something with a heartbeat and they know where their fish is found. And so those ampullae help sharks find their food in a different way from using their sense of smell or their sense of sight. So I'm gonna go back to my shark. I have a little bit run out of room, but I'm gonna add some little freckles here at the front to represent the shark's ampullae. Little polka dots on its nose. But those ampullae are really important. It's what we call an adaptation. I know I've been throwing a lot of big words at you today, scientists, but I bet you can handle them all. And adaptation might be a word you're familiar with. So that word adaptation is something on an animal's body that's gonna help it survive in its habitat. So every animal you can think of, you could look around at pictures or at animals you see around you, and you can find adaptations on every animal, including Humans have adaptations too, but those ampullae are an adaptation that sharks have because it allows them to live and survive in their habitat. It helps them to find their food. So our shark has its fins, it can swim, it's got gills, it's got an eye, it can see, it's got its mouth, it can eat, it's got a nose so it can smell and ampullae to sense electrical charges. And the one last thing I'm gonna draw is I'm gonna draw sort of a line here just to show color change. So I'm not gonna color in my shark, but you of course are welcome to color in your shark. But if we go back to shark, oh, I kind of tilted it. We go back to Shark Lagoon for a moment. And you see our sharks, even this zebra shark right here, that looks a little bit different. You can kind of see that its belly is white 
And as our reef sharks, they're coming around. Oh, look at this, like a little parade of reef sharks. You can see there's a very clear line color change on these animals. So most fish and sharks, I won't say all, but most, have this darker color on their back and lighter color on their belly. So it's almost like a very clear line that's drawn on them, where they're one color on the back and a different color on their belly. And that's actually a type of camouflage. So if you've heard that word camouflage before, we think of camouflage as an animal who is the same color as their background or habitat so they can blend in. But there's actually different types of camouflage. And countershading, where an animal is dark on one side and light on the other, is a form of camouflage. And how it works is it protects the animal from above and below. So think about it. If you're on a boat, ooh, we've got a big stingray coming. That's kind of fun to see. We'll pause for a moment. This is our big stingray. She's called a reticulate whiptail ray, and even she has counter shading. Even though we don't often see the bottom of her, her, the bottom of her body is all light, and the top is pretty dark. But the way counter shading works is I want you to think about if you're on a boat on the ocean and you look down at the water, what color is the water going to look like? That's right, it's going to look blue, kind of a dark color. And so the dark color of these animals, their back will blend in. Now, if you're below the surface and you look up, like if you look up at any lights that are on around you, it's going to look really bright. And so that white belly of the animal blends in. So the animal is protected from the top and the bottom, and it helps them blend in. It helps them to stay safe so predators don't see them, but it also allows them to be able to sneak up on their food if they are the predator hunting something else. And so that line that I drew on the shark to, to kind of show the different color, the top and the bottom, helps protect the shark and helps them to hunt in their habitat. All right, let's take one more look at my shark picture. What do you think? Looks like a pretty good shark? I agree, I think it looks like a pretty good shark. It, at least we know that this is a shark and we've covered a lot of the features of a shark that make a shark a shark. Their fins, their gills, their teeth, their nose, their ampullae, their eye, and that counter shading, the difference in the color from the top and bottom. All right, we are almost out of time, but I want to take a look at one shark that I mentioned, and that is our zebra shark. And I want to mention because it looks pretty different from the shark that we drew here and those reef sharks we were looking at. Now, we have a couple zebra sharks here at the aquarium, and they have the same features that we drew on our shark. They've got fins and gills and eyes and ampullae, all those same things, but their body looks a little bit different. What differences do you notice on this shark than some of those other sharks or even the shark that we drew? One thing I notice are these ridges, right? So their body, the texture and the sort of shape or form is not always the same. So zebra sharks have these really cool ridges along their body. And then it's a little hard to see, but you can tell their fin back here is not as big of a triangle as I drew or we noticed on those reef sharks in Shark Lagoon. Now, zebra sharks, they do have a dorsal fin. You can see it here. Oh, here we go, here's a good picture. So their dorsal fin is a little bit smaller and it's not as pointed. Now, they use their dorsal fin for balance, just like any other shark, but that tells us something about how this shark moves. So that dorsal fin helps with balance, but the larger the dorsal fin, the faster moving that animal is gonna go. So we know that sharks or even fish or whales or dolphins that have a really big dorsal can swim very, very fast. Think about an orca whale. Orcas have six foot tall dorsal fin and they can have really, really, really big bursts of speed because that dorsal fin helps keep them balanced when they're moving really fast. So having this small dorsal fin on the zebra shark, that tells us that the shark isn't gonna be swimming very fast. Even if it has bursts of speed, it's not gonna go as fast as some of those sharks. And then look at the coloring. The color is really different. Now it still has that counter shading where it's darker on the top and lighter on the bottom, but it's not a solid color like those gray reef sharks or those black tip reef sharks. It's got, well here it's got spots, but the other zebra shark we were looking at, or this one has spots and stripes. The other one just had spots, but something I keep calling it is a zebra shark. Is that confusing to anyone? Sounds a little bit to me because does this look like a zebra shark? It definitely does not. But let's take a look at baby zebra sharks. Ta-da! Look at these baby zebra sharks. Does that maybe look more like a zebra? I think so. So the interesting thing about zebra sharks is they are native to Australia, which means that's where they come from. So we don't find them here in our local waters in California. We'll find them in tropical waters. Now, if you travel to Australia and you go to an aquarium or you go out on a boat and you see these sharks, 
they will refer to them as leopard sharks, which as an adult sounds like a much more appropriate name because their body pattern kind of looks like a leopard. But here in California, if you go to our local waters or you come to an aquarium, you'll see that we have a shark called a leopard shark and it looks very different. So we already have a leopard shark here. So if we refer to them both as leopard sharks, that could get really confusing if we're trying to care for them because you might say, oh, Sarah, did you feed the leopard sharks? And I may have fed these leopard sharks, but I didn't feed the one that you're referring to. And then that care does. This is the other leopard shark. So this is a leopard shark that we have here in California and it looks very different. So to prevent all that confusion, our zebra sharks here, we call them zebra sharks because as a baby, they look more like a zebra. And then as they grow, those stripes, those black and white zebra stripes break up and they eventually have leopard spots. But that's why we call them a zebra shark, even though they look more like a leopard shark. So the zebra shark has those same features of the other sharks, but as I mentioned, they just look a little bit different. Different color pattern, different sort of texture on their body, a little bit different. Even their mouth is a little bit different. Their mouth is more on the bottom than straight in front of them. So these zebra sharks are going to be eating things they find in the sand, kind of like I was saying they use those ampullae to find their food. So they're going to be eating things they find in the sand, like those clams or shrimps or even small fish that are hiding underneath uh, that surface. Excellent. All right, stealthy stink. I know we had to cut our program short by a couple minutes, but I hope you enjoyed learning about sharks drawing your shark. If you drew a shark and you'd like to share it with us, feel free to text in. We'll put that text line number up again. And we'd love to see your drawings if you drew a shark and you'd like to share. Now, if you're feeling crafty and you drew a shark and you'd like to continue your crafting, we have an at-home activity on our website about building a clothespin shark. So you can find that on our website. Continue your learning about sharks. And we'll see you again tomorrow for more Stealthy Stingray classes. Thanks, everyone. Have a good rest of your day.